Hey everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy, and today we're just going to be talking about NaNoWriMo tips. So in our last video, we talked about deciding whether you want to do NaNoWriMo this year, reasons to do or not do NaNoWriMo, and today's video is for anyone who decided, actually I would like to do NaNoWriMo this year, including myself. I will be participating for the first time in like five years. So today I'm just going to be talking about NaNoWriMo tips. Even though it's been a while since I participated, I do consider myself a NaNoWriMo veteran. I participated five years in a row. So let's talk about NaNoWriMo tips and making the most of your NaNoWriMo. Tip number one, write every day even if you don't meet your word count. This is my goal going into NaNoWriMo 2020. I don't intend to win. I don't even want to. Writing 50,000 words would be bad for my process. I'm a pretty slow drafter. I like to take my time. But I would like to use the opportunity to challenge myself to write every single day with even without daily word counts. So my first tip is even if you don't reach the word count, just challenge yourself to write every single day. Even if your goal is to win, if you fall a bit behind trying to write every day, it's totally possible to catch up, but it's going to be hard to catch up if you start taking days off. Tip number two is to start as early in the day as possible. The later you leave writing in the day, the harder it's going to be to start and the easier it's going to be to talk yourself into not starting because it's now too late. I find it is easier to start writing if I have written earlier in the day. Even though I normally, outside of a NaNoWriMo context, would only write just in one writing session, NaNoWriMo is a great time to try writing multiple times throughout the day. One great technique is to try doing a 20 minute word sprint right in the morning, right when you wake up, start waking up 20 minutes earlier, do a 20 minute word sprint. It'll be so much easier to come back to writing in the afternoon or the evening or whenever it is that you normally write. Tip number three is to not be afraid to take the rules. NaNoWriMo doesn't have to be approached in its purest form. If you don't want to write 50,000 words, if you don't want to start from the beginning of a manuscript, whatever it is that you need to do to modify the rules to best suit you is totally okay. NaNoWriMo is not a competition, it's a personal challenge for personal development, which means that you should do it in a way that's most beneficial to you. If that means breaking the rules a little bit, that is totally okay. Kind of as long as you feel like you're still embodying the spirit of NaNoWriMo, you know, that idea of just keep writing, don't look back, challenge yourself to write more than you normally would, you can do that in whatever capacity you like. Tip number four, if your story gets stuck, just skip the hard parts. Books get stuck. It happens. Your book will probably get stuck. You'll hit a roadblock multiple times throughout the process. Um, that's totally normal. But in this case, in this specific context, I do think the best way to deal with it is to just skip over and keep going and come back later. NaNoWriMo is all about building momentum. You challenge yourself to write every single day and you build more and more momentum as the month goes on, which can help you get through the parts later in the month where you might be tired. However, you're gonna stall your momentum if you get caught up on the problems. A lot of the time, the easiest way to fix a problem in your plot is to just skip over it or implement kind of like <laughs> a bullshit solution. Um, this is what I do a lot that I know I'm gonna need to edit and just keep going. When I come back and edit the book a few months later, the solution is obvious. It can often be easier to fix problems in retrospect. Don't get caught up on them during NaNoWriMo. Tip number five is to do writing sprints at spare moments throughout the day. If you're really busy, it can be hard to think of NaNoWriMo in terms of one long writing session. Maybe it takes you a couple hours normally to write about 1700 words. But instead, break it up into small, manageable chunks. Plan to do writing sprints when you have time, maybe at different points throughout the day. Do writing sprints at spare moments throughout the day. So I talked earlier about how you can start your day with doing a writing sprint, but if you can't find like a two hour chunk in the day to write, just find little 20 minute windows spread throughout the day to write, write in spare moments. It can really, really add up, especially if you commit to just writing with no distractions in really, in really focused bursts. The next tip is to not give up if you fall behind. If you fall super behind, don't just quit. Instead, make a new goal. You can keep going and still make the most of this challenge, even if you know you're not gonna reach the 50,000 words, even if that was your original intention. Maybe you fall really far behind because of personal reasons or just because your project was more difficult than you were anticipating. It's okay. If you're at a point where it would be impossible to catch up two weeks in, don't give up. Just reevaluate, make a new goal for yourself. Maybe your goal is going to be to just write, you know, the 1,667 words every day 
until the end of the month, even if you don't reach 50,000. Or maybe you wanna set a new word goal for yourself. But stop and reevaluate if you get to the point where it seems impossible. You will be so much happier that you finish the challenge on your own terms rather than giving up. The next tip is to write before watching TV or going on social media or doing any kind of really low energy task. It can be really hard to get back into writing on any given day if you've let your brain get into too deep of a lazy space. Obviously, you need to take care of yourself and find moments to rest, but I'd recommend doing this type of rest where you really aren't engaging your brain that much after writing rather than before. This is something I find just in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I usually like to write shortly after I'm done working for the day, and I find that I do like a little bit of a break just to kind of clear my mind, rest a little before I write, but if that rest is watching an episode of a show or like going on Twitter or something, I get into such a low energy brain space that it's like so hard to bring myself back up into writing. So instead what I like to do is find a way to clear my mind that doesn't let me sink into that really, really low productivity space. So I like to go for a walk. That's a great way to just like clear my mind, create a nice separation between my work day and my creative work day so that they don't feel like kind of the same thing which can be really overwhelming because then your workday feels like extremely long. Or, and this leads to the next tip, if you don't feel like writing one day, if you really don't feel like writing, read instead. Reading is also a great way to take a break before you write, but if you don't feel like writing, try to challenge yourself to at least read on that day because a lot of the time, if you read, it will inspire you to get writing when you didn't think you had it in you that day. Reading is a really great way to gear you up to write. Sometimes reading other people's words will kind of shake up your story in your brain, will get it moving, will get you thinking about it. And it's a great solution on a day where otherwise you just really don't feel like writing. The next tip is to minimize the amount of effort it takes to write. I talked a little about this in, the video, in our video on writing a first draft from a couple weeks ago. So this might be a familiar piece of advice, but I think it's pretty important for a challenge like NaNoWriMo. Probably one of your biggest obstacles in doing NaNoWriMo is going to be building up the energy to start writing. In my experience, it takes a lot more effort to start writing than it does to actually write. <laughs> so what you wanna do is minimize any obstacle, no matter how small, that your brain uses to prevent you from writing. If there's anything that you find makes writing feel harder, try to remove it from your life. One that I find is a really big example that I would often find this less with writing but with school assignment is that I felt like it would take a lot of effort for me to go all the way through my documents through all the folders because I would save my school documents like in a folder for the class which was in a folder for the semester which was in a folder for the year which was in a folder for all my schoolwork like it was like so many folders deep that it felt like it took a lot of effort to just get to the document so what I would do is just save it on my desktop. So it's right there, it's super easy. There's no excuse to not open it. There's, no, there's nothing making it harder to access. This could be a range of things, but anything that you find makes writing feel harder, even if it doesn't actually make writing feel harder. Like the fact that I have to click through four folders to get to that assignment doesn't actually make the assignment harder to do. It's just a little thing my brain uses to stop me from actually doing it. So try to remove those things. Minimize the amount of effort it takes to write. I remember when I was doing NaNoWriMo, I would basically have my novel document open on my computer at all times. I would just have it like minimized in the corner, but it was always there. So that anytime I had time, I could just open it up. It was right there, it took zero effort. And my final tip is remember that this is supposed to be difficult. It's going to be difficult but it's also going to be fun if you have the right headspace. I was talking about this with some other Reezy team members actually today about how NaNoWriMo is not as hard as you think it's going to be. It's not like creative torture, like it seems when you look at it from the outside. It's actually really, really fun, but only if you go in with the right headspace. If you go in with the wrong mindset, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, if you're not excited to do it, then yes, writing 1700 words a day for a month will be really hard and it's not gonna be fun. But if you go in with the right headspace, if you're excited about it, if you're approaching it for the right reasons, it's gonna be really rewarding. I don't know, it's kind of magic. It puts you into this kind of like, I call it the NaNoWriMo adrenaline, where you just get this like burst of motivation to write. I don't know where it comes from. The words just kind of pour out and suddenly a novel draft emerges a month later when 
normally you feel like you would never be able to do that. It's okay if it's difficult. It's a pretty objectively difficult task, writing 50,000 words in a month. But if you're going in for the right reasons, if you're excited about it, it should also be fun. So let it be fun. Don't approach it like a chore. Approach it as something that you're really excited to be participating in. So that is all for today's video. If you've participated in NaNoWriMo before, let me know what your best NaNoWriMo tips are in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And I'll leave a link to our NaNoWriMo playlist with all our NaNoWriMo videos from past years, including some other NaNoWriMo tips on things like um, Preptober tips, things to help you prepare for NaNoWriMo, and tips to actually help you reach your workout. So you can check that out in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.